In today's video, we are comparing five different filter sets for the Mavic 3 Pro, this thing right here. DJI, newer, Freewell, and two sets from Power Pro. Now, what actually makes this comparison interesting is the fact that the DJI Mavic 3 Pro has three different cameras, with three different sensors and also three different apertures. Now you might be wondering, why does this matter? Well, good question. Let's take a look. The main camera has a 4 3rd sensor, which makes it a 1.33 inches in diagonal with an aperture that can be changed between 2.8 and 11. The second camera offers a 3x zoom and it has a 1 over 1.3 inch sensor, which makes it 0.78 inch across, or roughly half of the main sensor. And it also has an aperture f2.8, although this one is fixed, unlike the main camera. Now the difference in sensor size makes it one stop of light darker than the main 1x camera. Now, if you don't know what a stop of light is, it's a unit of measurement to compare the amount of light entering the sensor. A stop of light can be controlled by changing the aperture, the shutter speed, and or the ISO. Now, why do we care, you say? Well, we care because if we apply the same settings to both cameras, let's say 1 over 60 for the shutter speed and ISO 100, and we add the same aperture of f2.8, then it means that the 3x camera will be darker by one full stop of light simply because the difference in sensor size. This means that if you're using an ND filter to remove some light to, let's say, record a video using both the 1x and the 3x camera interchangeably, all while using the same shutter speed and the same ISO, then we would theoretically need to apply two different ND filters, one for each camera, each of them one stop apart. So for example, an ND16 on the 1x camera and an ND8 on the 3x camera. But there's an easy fix for that. The main camera has a variable aperture, so let's use an aperture one stop darker. Let's go with f2.8 to f4. Problem solved. Both cameras are now exposed the same. We can use the same ND filter. What about the other camera? The third one. That's right, the 7x zoom. Well, I'm glad you asked. That camera has yet another sensor, a half inch sensor in this case, which theoretically makes it roughly 0.4 stops of light darker than the 3x camera, or 1.4 stop darker than the 1x camera. And that's not it. It also has a fixed aperture of f3.4, which adds another 0.3 stops of light darker. You still with me? That's right, your math is correct. The 7x camera is technically 1.7 stops darker than the 1x camera and 0.7 stops darker than the 3x camera. So am I saying that we need yet another type of ND filter for the 7x if we want to use the same settings as the other two cameras? Well, yes, but we could also change our shutter speed from 1 over 60 to 1 over 40, except that would not really be good for videos. It would change the motion blur and potentially look a little bit weird. Now we could bump up the ISO from 100 to 200. That's a full stop of light. And that's actually what we did throughout our testing with some of these filters. We could also use a filter set from DJI or one from newer because these two companies realized the challenge of having three cameras in this thing and they changed the opacity of the filter that goes over the 7X camera. For the DJI set, which sells for $179 and comes with the ND8, 16, 32, and 64, the results were such that the ND16, 32, and 64 over the 7X camera were between 0.7 and one stop of light lighter than the filters over the 1X and the 3X camera. This means that when we were using f4 on the 1x, f2.8 and f3.4 on the 3x and 7x respectively, then we were using the same shutter speed and the same ISO across the board. We were actually able to seamlessly change between the three cameras and get equally exposed footage. Awesome. Now the accuracy of the density of the filter was well within the margin of error for our testing, aka an ND32 was indeed as dark as an ND32 was supposed to be. Which by the way we consider being within one third of a stop of the advertised density as being accurate. Now one thing did bug me during the testing, and that has to do with the ND8. An ND8 filter is one stop of light lighter than an ND16. 
Same for the difference between ND16 and ND32 or ND32 to ND64. That's one stop of light. So when DJI designed the ND16 filter, they put on an ND16 in front of the 1X and the 3X camera, and then they put on an ND8 in front of the 7X camera. So it was one stop of light lighter. Smart, awesome. But they made a mistake when they did the ND8 filter. They put an ND8 in front of the 1X and the 3X camera. That makes sense, no problem there. But they put an ND0 or clear filter in front of the 7X camera. Believe it or not, an ND8 actually stops three stops of light. And a clear filter stops zero stops of light. So the difference between the 1X slash 3X lenses and the 7X lens is three stops of light, not one stop like it's supposed to be. So in other words, they should have put an ND4 in front of the 7X lens. So my recommendation at this stage, if you're using the DJI filter set and you plan on switching between cameras and keep the same settings, don't use the ND8. You will need to change your shutter speed by three stops of light darker. That means that your one over 60 shutter speed needs to now be one over 500. That's a big difference if you're recording videos. Now you might be wondering, what about the $79 newer filter, which also comes with four filters, but in this case, the ND8 filter from the DJI set was replaced with a fixed polarized filter. They were also very accurate as far as density and well within the acceptable margin of error. Both the ND16 and the ND32 filters were 0.7 stops lighter on the 7X than they were on the 1X and the 3X. The ND64, interestingly, was the same darkness all across with a total of 5.7 stops of light reduction. Now the $149 Freewell filter surprised us because it came with eight filters. That's right, all of this right here. That included five polarized filters, an ND8, 16, 32, 64, and then a traditional circular polarizer. But you also get a UV filter, an ND1000 and an ND2000, which might be useful for that extra blur during time-lapse, but we didn't really get a chance to test these two. Now, all four of these uh, polarized ND filters were very accurate within a third of a stop, and then the same density across the 1X, 3X, and 7X. Now, this means that we had to make the 7X camera one stop brighter by increasing the ISO from 100 to 200 in order to maintain the same exposure across all three cameras. Not a big deal, but definitely something to note. When it came to the Polar Pro filter, both sets came with three filters. They were priced at $129.99 per set with one set polarized and one set that was not polarized, but all of them were in the 8, 16, and 32. Now, the accuracy of the density was similar to the other brands, well within the one third of a stop, and like the Freewell filters, was the same density all across the 1X, 3X, and 7X camera. Now, this means that, again, using ISO 200 instead of 100 on the 7X camera in order to maintain the same shutter speed on all three cams. A good filter test would not be complete without testing the tint and the white balance that changes between the filters. Now, a neutral density filter, emphasis on neutral, should not change the look of your image. This is where we got, well, a few surprises. And the first one was when we had no filter on the drone in itself. Now, keep in mind, Throughout this section, tint is the shift between green and magenta, and then white balance refers to the shift between orange and blue. So what was the surprise, you may say? Well, we shined a light, a 5600 5, Kelvin light to the drone, and we set the white balance in the drone to 5600. We found that the 1X, 3X, and the 7X camera all returned different tint and color temperature without having a filter installed. Now, I wouldn't call that any major differences, but it was important for us to have a baseline in order to compare the filters uh, from each different cameras. And so let's take a look at those results. At 1X, the DJI filter performed really well. Uh, the changes in tint and color temperature were very minimal. In other words, they were pretty neutral. At 3X, the difference was pretty marginal, but the ND16 stood out by shifting towards the green, and then the ND64 shifted a little bit towards the purple. At 7X, the filters performed really well with minimal changes, with maybe, maybe a little bit of magenta on the ND32 and the ND64, but I quite frankly think it's still within the margin of error. 
The newer filters perform really well at 1x with minimal shift. At 3x, we saw a little bit of green at ND16, a little bit of purple at ND32, and then a slight color temperature at ND64. At 7x, the filters were solid and well within the margin of error. The Freewell kit is the one that impressed me the most, with very little change at 1x, 3x, and 7x across the board, from ND8 all the way to ND64. Now, take a look at these images and let me know what you think. Very impressive, if you ask me, for a kit that was not the most expensive and actually came with eight different filters. Now, unfortunately, I cannot say the same about the Polar Pro non-polarized filters. The density part was good, but the neutral part, not so good. At 1x, we had the non-polarized filters that were all over the place. ND16 was showing a little bit of purple, ND32 shifting a little bit to the blue. On the other hand, the polarized version of those filters performed really well with only the ND16 shifting a little bit towards warmer temperatures. At 3x, the three polarized filters were, again, doing pretty good, but not their non-polarized counterparts. At ND8, 16, and 32, we saw green, purple, and blue tones, respectively. At 7x, the non-polarized filters showed the same green, purple, and blue shift at ND8, 16, and 32. Again, the polarized filters perform really well in this case, and a lot better than the non-polarized version. Speaking of polarization, with both the Freewell and the Polar Pro providing circular polarizing options, we decided to put them to the test, and we used clouded blue sky. That's right. Uh, polarized filters can be used to remove reflection on the water or create that dark blue sky against white clouds. Now, you'll need to tinker with these filters a little bit in order to find the right spot. For us, the Freewell filters performed the best with all three lenses when the dot was oriented all the way down at the bottom. The Polar Pro filters worked the best when we had the dot oriented 30 degrees or so to the right of the reference line, right about the five o'clock mark, uh, if you know how to read a real watch. <laughs> and I know that's not everyone these days. All right, the results were pretty dramatic between the polarizer uh, fully on versus fully off. And I'm not gonna lie, in this case, it's pretty difficult for me to find a clear winner. Uh, both brands provided beautiful dark blue skies around the clouds, making them pop right out of the image, as you can see on those images right here. Uh, they were both pretty easy to use, as long as you keep in mind that you can't change the position while you're flying. Also, keep in mind that while the wheel is going to rotate 360 degrees, the effect on the first 180 degrees will be mirrored on the next 180 degrees. So if you find a sweet spot, you can actually turn the filter 180 degrees to get the same exact effect. You might be wondering, which sets are we going to be using going forward? Well, personally, I'm more interested in the color accuracy than I am in the actual density, but the Freewell, in this case, checked pretty much all the boxes for me. It was accurate as far as density, even though it was missing the lighter filter on the 7X camera. Now, more importantly, the color accuracy was the most consistent, and I think the value provided for eight different filters, including polarization, it's hard to beat, as long as, of course, $149 doesn't scare you away. Now, if you're on the budget, I don't think you can go wrong with a $79 newer set. And in this case, it had a slight tint change at 3X, but otherwise was very solid with both the color and the density accuracy. With the different uh, density on the 7X, it also gives you better flexibility when switching between lenses. I would also not hesitate to use the Polar Pro Vivid Collection. That's the polarized one. It performed really well for color and density density accuracy, and they actually look really cool with that gold frame around them. At $129, it's $20 less than my personal pick, but the price is actually a bit steep if you only consider getting three filters. And yes, you can argue that those would be the three filters that you're gonna use the most, but still. The DJI set was the most expensive, and quite frankly, I don't think it deserves the price premium, especially with the ND8 filter being extremely confusing at 7X. Now, the Polar Pro shutter series, the non-polarized one, makes the bottom of my list due to the weird color shift across the board and also the high price point for only having three filters. Now, go ahead, tell me which one are you gonna pick?